Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again. That's for art. And as you can see, I'm back. I was down for a day. Uh, actually, I had a lot of homework to do. I felt much better. I did do my secret cure again today. I think it really does help. Um, it comes from the Vanderbilt University. So that's where I heard about it. Anyways, I am going to read from you this chart. This, uh, continue this article, a scientific, it's not a scientific journal, it's a peer-reviewed journal uh, in the field, I think, of sociology. Testing the validity of International Atomic Energy Agency safety culture model. And it's called the Accident Analysis and Prevention, magazine number 60. The homepage is lsevier.com. And it is an article when I was looking up for uh, a science project last year. My question was, my scientific question that I had to study and research, this did not make it into it. Or maybe it did. Uh, does the IAEA lie to us about nuclear pollution? Do they tell us the truth? That actually convinced my science teacher who thought Fukushima was just fine. That's the scary part, isn't it? Our scientific teachers, they actually know nothing. Ah. So I'm picking this back up. Uh, if this journal, if you get this journal, number 60, it is from 2013, page 231 to 244. So that's what we're going to be reading, 31 to 44. And we are on uh, 233. I'm going to pick it up from where we were before. The authors of the present paper are especially interested in the dimensions proposed by the IAEA because they are widely accepted and used in the nuclear industry. The IAEA model was compared to the dimensions suggested in the other six studies mentioned above. Two of the dimensions of the IAEA model, quote, safety is a clearly recognized value, unquote, and, quote, Safety is integrated into all activities, unquote. Could not be clearly related to any of the dimensions proposed by these studies. At first glance, the labels of these two dimensions seemed very general and wide in scope. Therefore, covering the content of these dimensions would probably require a large number of attributes. The IAEA's dimension, quote, leadership for safety is clear, unquote, is consistent with the HSE's, quote, safety leadership, unquote, as both generally highlight that leadership is the key element for safety. The dimensions, quote, participata participative management leadership style, unquote, as reported by Sorensen, excuse me, uh, quote, leadership safety values and actions, unquote, which is by the NRC, our beloved NRC, and, quote, leadership demonstrate, leaders demonstrate commitment to safety, unquote. That is the INPO and the WNAO. They, all these cover distinct aspects of the IAEA's Leadership for safety is clear, and as such, they could be understood as attributes of it. The IAEA's dimension, accountability for safety is clear, corresponds fairly well to the NRC's dimension, personal accountability, and to the INPO, WANO's, everyone is personally responsible for nuclear safety. Finally, the IAEA's dimension, safety is learning driven, shows the closest match to the studies to which it was compared. In this regard, the reviews by Sorensen, Good Organizational Learning, the HSA, which is a learning culture, and the INPOWANO, Organizational Learning is Embraced, and the NRC, Continuous Learning, agree with the IAEA that learning is fundamental to preserving the safety of HROs. So if you recall, what's the HRO? Highly Reliable Organizations. Moreover, the NRC and the INPOWANO include a questioning attitude as a dimension of safety culture, 
which can also be understood as an attribute of the IAEA's safety is learning driven. The dimensions of the IAEA model are covered by 37 attributes, which are presented in this section. Some of these attributes have similar labels to the dimensions proposed by other authors. An analysis of these correspondences is not included in this paper. Nevertheless, Two examples are given to show the existing confusion between dimensions and attributes of safety culture. Sorensen, Chowdhury, and the INPOWANO include a dimension of safety culture referring to management, com management's commitment to safety. The IAEA captures this element in the attribute, commitment to safety is evident at all levels of management which belongs to the IAEA's dimension of leadership for safety is clear. As a second example, Sorensen, Wigman, the HSA, and NRC believe that one dimension of safety culture should highlight the existence of report systems for safety issues and an environment for raising concerns without fear of retaliation. Ha! This idea is reflected in the IAEA's attribute, open reporting of deviations and errors is encouraged, which is part of the IAEA's dimension, safety is learning driven. Wow, what a pile of crap. We all know what happens to anybody who raises a question at any nuclear facility. 1.3, the IAEA five-dimensional safety culture model. This is the safety culture model, folks, that nobody has ever verified. There is no empirical evidence that it has ever worked. <coughs> Sorry about that. The IAEA has created a model for the common understanding and assessment of safety culture within nuclear power facilities. The model described in Table 2 is identified in safety guide number GSG31 IAEA 2006B. Wow. So I'm going to show you this big long thing. It's a, this is the model. So I don't know if you can see that. But you see all those right here. This says safety is a clearly recognized value. And then here's all these a through A6, A1, and then B, leadership for safety is clear, B1 through B8. Accountability for nuclear, for safety is clear, 1 through C1 through C5. Oh my God. <coughs> safety is integrated into all activities. That's D. So we have D1 through D9. Oh my God. E, safety is learning driven, E1 through E7. So they have all these different guidelines that they suggest that they actually follow, which all of us know who even pays attention instead of listening to these lies knows it's nothing but a bunch of paper, a bunch of words written on paper. They could give a crap. Okay, this model is essential for achieving a strong safety culture. It is composed of 37 attributes clustered into five dimensions, referred to as the characteristics of the IAEA and mentioned in section 1.2. Safety is a clearly recognized value. Leadership for safety is clear. Accountability for safety is clear. Safety is integrated into all activities and safety is learning driven. And finally, this is my little thing that they want to tell us. Everything about nuclear is safe. So don't worry about it, folks. Just go right back to Fukushima. The, inter the, uh, the, the, the IAEA explains that the attributes are short descriptions of a specific organizational performance or attitude in a nuclear facility, which, if fulfilled, would characterize this performance or attitude as belonging to a strong safety culture. The characteristics and attributes are general enough to reflect the reality of distinct types of nuclear facilities in, in the NPPs, research reactors, fuel cycles, facilities, etc. The IAEA highlights that all individuals must have a common understanding of the characteristics and attributes of this model. 
Consequently, training should be regularly provided to make sure that the model is understood and acted upon. Yeah, they get to go spend a week in a super fancy hotel on our tax dollars. At the management level, importance is given to the monitoring and reinforcement of attributes and to the detection of early signs of decline in these attributes. The IAEA recommends that safety culture assessments take the characteristics and attributes of its model into account. This recommendation is applicable to independent assessments, which as internal audits, external audits, surveillance and reviews, checks and inspections, as well as to self-assessments. The IAEA in 2009-A specifies that these characteristics and attributes should all be covered when developing interview questions, items for inclu inclusion in a questionnaire or issues for discuss discussion in a focus group. As an example, the IAEA has developed a triangulated methodology to assess safety culture based on this model. This methodology called SCART, Safety Culture Assessment Review Team, includes interviews, observations, and documentation reviews. SCART is aimed at identifying strengths and areas for improvement in nuclear facilities in relation to the dimensions and attributes of the IAEA model. Although the IAEA's role is purely advisory, its model for safety culture is becoming a reference for regulatory bodies. As an example, the Norwegian Radiation Protection Authority and the Department of Nuclear Safety and Security of the IAEA are working together with the Bulgarian Nuclear Safety Agency and the National Committee for Nuclear Activities Control toward the development and implementation of several projects to promote nuclear safety in Bulgaria and Romania. These projects aim to enhance the ability of the BNRA and CNA, CNCAN to assess the safety culture of their licensees. Let's see, what does that say? on the basis of the IAEA safety culture model and the SCART methodology. Another example comes from the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology in South Korea, which encourages NPPs, those are nuclear power plants, to improve their methodologies for safety culture self-assessment by taking the IAEA safety culture model into consideration. An increasing number of well-known organizations are recognizing the importance of the model. On the other hand, SCART missions are being carried out in different nuclear organizations, such as the Pebble Bed Modular Reactor Limited in South Africa, Santa Maria de Goronia in Spain, and Agua Verde in Mexico. Okay, 1.4. Need for empirical testing of the IAEA five-dimensional safety culture model. The five dimensions and the 37 attributes of the IAEA safety culture model serve to understand what safety culture is and what organizational aspects should be assessed, monitored, and acted upon in order to ensure safer nuclear facilities. In this sense, the work of the IAEA has been commendable and highly useful in the nuclear industry. However, and to our knowledge, the validity of the IAEA model and the measurement instruments based on the model have not been empirically tested yet. The course of action in science that is applied must be empirically validated before it can be applied to practical settings. Empirical validation ideally takes place before the application of a model, but if not, during or after its application. In any case, this validation is not only desirable, but also necessary in order to ensure a rigorous professional performance in solving organizational problems. The scientist practitioner is a good example of the way professionals who are scientifically rigorous in developing and implementing solutions must act to maximize success when facing practical problems. 
However, on some occasions, the need for urgent and efficient solutions to practice problems justifies professionals putting supposedly good models into practice, even though these models do not have sufficient empirical support. <coughs> I'm sorry. Not quite over it. Let me read this again. However, on some occasions, the need for urgent and efficient solutions to practical problems justifies professionals putting supposedly good models into practice, even though these models do not have sufficient empirical support. This is the case of the nuclear industry, where the pressing need for cultures can guarantee the safety of nuclear facilities has led to the extended use of the IAEA safety culture model. In our opinion, this model has contributed to fulfilling the needs stated by the nuclear industry. However, a model that has the potential to change nuclear safety outcomes should have sufficient empirical support. No, duh. The empirical validation of the IAEA model is necessary in order to maximize its practical usefulness in the nuclear industry. The validation of an assessment instrument, such as the one directly derived from the IAEA model and the 37 attributes included in this model to capture the five dimensions proposed, require accumulating evidence that support the adequacy, meaning, and usefulness of its inferences that can be drawn from this instrument. In this context, if there was a lack of empirical correspondence between the IAEA's attributes and the dimensions proposed by the model, the scores on the dimensions obtained from safety culture assessments could lead to misleading inferences. Yeah, we got a world full of that. Therefore, we believe that testing the correspondence between the attributes and the dimensions is of paramount importance and contributes to obtaining evidence about the validity of the IAEA model. As a result, we agreed to accept this challenge by working on three independent empirical studies designed to study the face, content, and factorial validity of the IAEA model. I'm going to stop there. We're in part two. The next part is the method. So we're going to get right into, I have this little system where I just mark where I stop so I don't have to remember. So what a trip. Can you guys believe this? They've never even tried it. Wow. Well, we can believe it. Look what we've got going on at every single nuclear facility. It's a complete disaster, a failed experiment, and it is not only just killing the planet, it's contributing to all of the global. I firmly believe that nuclear is at the heart of all the global warming. I mean, it's incomprehensible what we have done to our planet, and we need to stop it. So put your courage feet on, you guys. Um, ciao. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to keep plugging away at this until we get it done, and then I'm going to go on to more readings. Um, for those of you who appreciate it, I really appreciate your subscribing to my channel and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao.